There you go. That's a kitty. That's a kitty. There you go, that's a kitty. That's a kitty. This kitty's always done this. It's like I'm a pole branch, like a tree branch, and just wants to. She just wants to sit on me. Now she's needing my sleeve. And you know what? This cat was an inside cat for about five weeks, maybe six. It was still pretty small when I made it go outside, but it hung out on the top rails of one of my porches. And uh, you know, my purpose for cats were to hunt vermin. Same reason I had my little dogs. Uh, they hunted vermin as well. Because I really, I only fed them three times a week. And that was all done by design. Because you want them to hunt. They were um, filled out. So I know I was feeding them enough and or they were hunting enough. Well, very similar with these kitties. Uh, they track a different kind of prey and they're usually pretty quiet about it. When a dog's tearing off ass after something, you usually know it. <laughs> Especially with the dogs that I had because they were tiny. Uh, T.A., which was short for tag along, he died recently. He was in a horrible accident. And uh, he had to be put to sleep. But he was a ballsy little bastard, too. Ballsy enough that he nearly got himself killed a bunch of times. Was he, he had little big man syndrome. He was a tiny little mix of terriers. Um, but I seen him stand down a coyote. And that was pretty impressive. Let's face it, T.A. was the size of this cat if not smaller but a good little dog to have around the homestead he uh he killed things too vermin pests you know when you live on acreage you're gonna have pests no matter what so uh a good set of animals and here's the thing i learned from another source that especially with cats you uh you want them to want to hang out with you and when you're outside and they want to hang out with you, you should hang out with them because then they'll keep doing their thing and they'll be fine to be outside. And even when it's cold as it is now, they're not really outside. He comes out, there's a uh, passageway that we left open for, because all of my animals were small, where they could go under the house and come up through a little section in the crawl space and come out through the crotch. And they would hang out in there when it got real cold because of the furnace. Now, the other animals are living in insulation. I didn't want to put the dogs in kennels, my remaining animals, um, and they are products of TA. So the, all the other remaining animals here, dog-wise, are products of Tagalong. Because there was another dog that just kind of showed up. We called her CT. I didn't know what the dog's name was. The dog wouldn't take food from me or anything like that. I'd take it from my wife, you know, but I called that dog Chicken Turd. So it was TA and CT. CT died a long time ago. She spit out litter after litter after litter after litter after litter. She, she wasn't even my dog. She just showed up here one day. And after about four days of her not leaving, my wife started feeding her and that was that. So there are three more and they are in a kennel and that's basically because I don't have a fence. The objective is to grow a fence in and it's happening, but you know that takes time. So I don't have a fence. So a lot of dogs around here run. It's not that uncommon, but I got a dick down the street who we didn't hit it off the moment I moved into the area one of my little farm and his little farm down the road there and uh he 
use a lot of colorful language in front of my children and has said some very insulting things. Uh, so we haven't, you know, that's a nice way to meet somebody, right? Insult them. Uh, we haven't gotten along. Well, anyway, he, he hassles me, you know, so uh, I have to keep them in, in a pen. But they are insulated with about four bales of hay strung out and they're dogs they'll bury down in it they'll huddle up together you know they'll be fine i've actually also been adding extra beef fat to their meals so these they don't run they don't prowl they don't hunt um and that's simply because i have this ass wipe of a guy down the road who uh and, and when i say down the road we're out here where the blacktop ends guys so He's down the road, but he's down the road enough to still be douchey, you know? So all these dogs, they don't run and hunt and prowl and eat and do what dogs do if you cut their food supply down. Because a dog will find things to eat or kill things to eat. And I'm not, you know, like I said, I fed them three times a week. So they weren't, you know, they were nice and puffy and fat, so I know they were eating enough. But the other animals, that's for TA and CT. Uh, the other animals I put uh, beef fat on their on their food and it's beef fat that I've actually rendered down so it's pure fat and I put that in a little potpourri pot that's all it takes potpourri pot it'll actually melt at inside the house temperatures I made a bunch of candles out of it and stuff and they were great for winter time but when it got hot and I opened up this survival uh, kit one night, the light emergency lighting kit one night when the power went out, and all the tallow candles were, you know, sliding around in their jars. So next time I'm going to make them up with some beeswax. The beeswax candles were perfectly fine, and the recycled candles, which is the candles of the candles of the candles. You know how candles are. If you don't have, if you just buy cheap candles, then they drip or they liquefy. And when they're done, I melt them all down in a potpourri pot and make new candles. Cheap potpourri pot, like a $10 potpourri pot, man, that's like an essential. You have to have one because you can just do so many, many things with it. But the point is, is that, you know, you can melt down two cups of beef tallow like in five minutes in a potpourri pot, pour it over your dog's food, and give them that extra fat energy that they're going to need for being outside. I mean... You know, we check on them. They're fine. They're all alive. They're not skinny. Um, so, everything's good there. Anyway, I'm standing out here in front of the uh, Deca furnace. You know I love my Deca furnace. And I'm standing out here building a fire and tending a fire. And here comes Mixy Kitty. She's all mixed up. And she uh, jumps from the ceiling onto my head and shoulders and starts crawling on me. She's always done that, even as a kitty. That's one thing I like about cats is no two of them are the same. You know, well, people do, you know, but cats can be really different where they, like, jump on you and hang out with you. And there's a couple of times where she's attacked me. Not attacked me like in an F-U kind of way, but attacked me in a, hey, look at me kind of way. <laughs> you know, like she jumps up on my leg and hangs out there. But she knows I'm wearing pants, right? It's a cat. You know, they, 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 they can be conditioned reasonably, you know. They know if they jump on you bare legged, they're going to get probably smacked. So, but she's a good kitty. And she's there cleaning her feet. Anyway, my name's Matt, and uh, I'm just hanging out in front of my Deca. Hey, thank you very much. Have a good night.